Google has been developing a collection of AI tools, many still in testing phase. I tried their Stream Real Time tool on the Google AI Studio, and YouTubers, beware. We're closer to this kind of scene than we might think. <laughs> okay, stop walking this direction. It's the other way. Um... Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the tunnel on the left is the only one we haven't tried. No, I think that's the one you sent me down where I fell in the pit. Okay, I don't think so. Oh, uh, yeah, this is different. It's easy to see in the not-so-distant future, AI replacing humans in all tutorials, real-time customer support, IT support, online education and training, live coaching, all these kind of interactions that we have in real time where we need information and get support from humans that we've been getting from. You can see the AI replacing that. And after watching this video, let me know in the comment section if you think you're going to enjoy and prefer to have direct AI help or will you prefer to use a human? So let's look at Google AI Studio and I'll show you some examples. You can go to aistudio.google.com and you'll get this interface. I'll just go do a general overview quickly and then I'll go into the tool itself. When you go into the interface, you get immediately access to the Gemini language model. It's very similar to ChatGPT or Claude and you can see the interface is quite similar. You've got your prompt here at the bottom. This is where you type your prompt. You've got system instructions where like in ChatGPT, you can customize the responses it gives it it gives you you can tell it to be formal informal conversational right at a level of eighth grade now on the right here it gives you the options of the tools so if i go into create a prompt so on the left here you've got the different tools so here it's just create a prompt it's purely textual this is where you, you can upload files here or images videos you can make it look through a camera record audio so it's giving you quite a lot of options of uploading data and information it can even connect to your google drive if you're a google account holder this is free to use and they've just launched the gemini 2 pro model which you get access to here on the right you've got different models to choose from so the Gemini 2 Flash model is a very good model. Their Pro model is very good at logical thinking, at coding. It's actually one of the top models right now. You're getting access to that for free. So if you're a Google account holder, I'll definitely be looking at using this. You get a million tokens to work with. The token count's very high. You've got tools like code execution, function calling. You can create settings for it to get the responses that you want. When you create just work and just the prompt, just the textual language in your library, it stores all the conversations you have with it. So much like ChatGPT, on the left, you'll start building all your conversations. It has examples of prompts. So you have a prompt gallery that you can look at if you want. But I'm going to look at the Stream Real-Time tool. So here, when you click left on Stream Real-Time, you've got your prompt, you've got your system instructions, like I've mentioned. You can decide, you can't, sorry, decide which model to use. It's using this flash experimental. Your output can be text or audio. We want audio and I'll show you how. You can choose which voice you want. Let's stick with Puck. You can talk to it purely with the microphone. You can share your screen or you can share your camera. So look, let's look at the first example. Imagine children doing their homework or you are a student. You can share your screen and you can share with the AI what the problem is. So I'll first write, I will share my screen with you after this prompt. I want you to act like a primary school teacher. I will show you a math problem my eight-year-old son got for his homework. One of the questions the teacher said he got wrong. Can you show me why and how to explain to him to solve such a problem? So I'll copy that into the prompt. I don't have to do that. I could read, I could say that in, in an audio and continue the conversation. I just find that this is a nice way to start off. Now, if I click here, it's going to immediately respond. The reason I'm not doing it yet is I want to talk to you. And if I talk to you while it's listening, it'll get confused. But what I'm going to do now is click here on the send. It'll immediately respond. I'll click the start record, start a video source, and you'll see me engage with it. Okay, I can help with that. Please share your screen when you're ready, and I'll do my best to explain the math problem like a primary school teacher would. Okay, can you see the problem? Yes, I can see the problem. Right, it seems that your son has made a mistake with the order of operations. In maths, we need to do things in a specific order. First, we need to do multiplication and division from left to right, and after that, addition and subtraction also from left to right. We need to use Bottomass or PEMDAS. Does your son know about it? No, and he's a young kid, so, you know, let's 
try to I want to explain to him in a way that that's easy to to understand. Okay, I understand. Let's go through it step by step. First, we need to look for any multiplication or division in the problem. We see 2 by 5, so we do that first, making sure we are doing the division before the subtraction and addition. The multiplication comes first, so 2 times 5 is 10. So after calculating 2 by 5 to get 10, our next step is to solve 5 sevenths. 5 divided by 7 is 5 sevenths. Okay, that's correct. Now the problem looks like 10 5 sevenths plus 8. So let's do the subtraction first. What's 10 minus 5 sevenths? Equals 9 and 2 sevenths. Exactly. 10 minus 5 sevenths is 9 and 2 sevenths. Now we still need to add 8 to that. So what is the final answer? So 9 and, and 2 sevenths plus 8 equals 17 and 2 sevenths. You are absolutely correct. The final answer is 17 and 2 sevenths. It's important to follow the order of operations, doing multiplication and division first, and then addition and subtraction. Perhaps you could explain it to your son using a mnemonic like B-O-D-M-A-S or PEMDAS. Would you like me to explain those? No, I don't think so. I don't know if you'll learn that. Try, maybe do the BODMAS, yeah. Okay, sure, I can explain B-O-D-M-A-S. It's a way to remember the order of operations in math problems. The letters stand for B is for brackets, which are always done first. O is for orders, which means powers or square roots. D is for division. M is for multiplication. A is for addition. And S is for subtraction. So always do things in that order. Is this clear? So you have brought up the idea of brackets. Where would I place the brackets to help him kind of visualize this problem? That's a great question. To help your son visualize the order of operations, you can add brackets around the parts that need to be done first. So in this case, you would write it as 2 by 5, 5 sevenths, plus 8. This clearly shows that the multiplication and division should be calculated first before any subtraction or addition. Would you like to go over a similar problem? No, but uh, I'm doing it now. I've done it now. Is that correct, what I've done? Yes, that is the correct way to write it with the brackets. Is there anything else I can help you with today? No, thanks. You're very welcome. Feel free to ask if you need any more help in the future. Okay, so as you can see, what you've got now is the conversation. Now, if I move away from this conversation, I lose the conversation. So if you want to keep it, you have all the audio here. You can download the audio and store them as separate audios and put them together if you want to, if you need the explanation to store it. It's transcribed everything it's said as well. It's not just audio. So its audio is followed by the transcript of what it said. So you could copy and paste all that text. You've also got the video here of the screen share or the images that you've shared with it. I don't think you can store it, but as you can see, you can probably, you can get a lot of interaction with it. And in this case, I could go back to my son and say, okay, this is how you solve the problem and explain to him. It's a very basic problem. I assume most people know how to solve that. But if they have more complicated questions, I don't, for example, remember all my high school maths and, and physics and chemistry that I learned. It'll help me remember things and explain things in a certain way before I sit with my kid to do homework with them. Or have your children sit in front of this and just engage it to have a one on one conversation with this AI tool to do their homework and come to better understanding of their work. So let's look at another example where it will give me a real-time software support. So I'll give it this prompt. I will share my screen with you after this prompt. I want you to act like an expert Photoshop trainer. I will ask you to help me with something in Photoshop, and I'm going to show it Adobe Illustrator as well. Do not repeat my questions back and clarify what I'm asking. Just answer the question. Understood? Let me copy that and paste it in. Yes, I understand. I'm ready when you are to act as your Photoshop trainer. Right. You see it? Yes, I see your Photoshop screen. Okay, so as you can see, I've got this image of a character. I created this in mid-journey. I remember there's a tool which I can push around pixels and, and change kind of the shapes of things and, and just kind of uh, adjust the image by pushing pixels around. I just don't remember the tool and where to find it. You're looking for the liquify tool. You can find it under the filter menu. Okay. Select filter. So this liquify here. That's right. The liquify tool is there. Okay. And how do I right, change the how do I change the brush size? Is there a shortcut for that? Yes. Use the left and right bracket keys to decrease and increase the brush size. Okay. Cool. Right. Do you have another question? Yeah. I want you to help me on an Adobe Illustrator, actually. So can you see the, my screen now? Yes. I see your Illustrator screen now. Okay. What are you seeing? I see a document with a floral design. It has an orange flower with blue leaves on a gradient background. So what I want is to vectorize this. And again, I forgot how to do that. 
To vectorize the image, use the image trace feature. You can find it in the properties panel under quick actions. And the properties panel, which uh, it's on the right here. Um, where, where is it? It's under quick actions in the properties panel. You should see the image trace button there. Ah, right at the bottom, quick actions, image trace. So if I want this, yeah, if I want this to be to maintain some of that gradient look, uh, so high quality vector, which, what would I select here? For a high quality vector with the gradient look, I would recommend selecting high fidelity photo as the preset and image tricks. Okay, so I've clicked on that. Now, what, like, how do I get access to all the vectors? I don't see any vectors. You need to expand the tracing result to access the vectors. You can do this by clicking the expand button in the image trace panel. Okay, but it's quite detailed. There's a lot of vectors. What would I need to do to have, or is it possible to actually create one vector for the background and then it treat the leaves separately? So I, I think you get the point. Um, what happened is sometimes your conversation will just suddenly stop. And I assume that's a server issue. My internet's quite fast and quite stable. So what I find happens sometimes is that it'll just stop. There's probably so much going on there. But as you can see, it's giving me support. And I can switch between software. So I'll ask it to help me with an Excel. At work, I used to have situations where I forgot how to do certain functions in Excel. Yes, I understand. I'm ready when you are to help with your Excel file. So can you see my Excel? Yes, I can see your Excel file. It appears to be an inventory data sheet. Right. Can you see uh, there's a column warehouse? I'd like to organize because there's three warehouses, W1, 2, and 3. I need to organize it so that I see the W1s together, the W2s together, and W3s together. And I forgot how okay, to do you'd that. You'd like to sort the data by the warehouse column, grouping all the D1s together, then the W2s, and then the W3s. To do this first, select any cell within your data. Then go to the data tab on the ribbon and click on the sort button. In the sort dialog box, choose warehouse under the sort by dropdown menu. Then click okay. Let's, let's do a step at a time. Okay, so I've selected a cell and then. Okay, now go to the data tab on the ribbon and click on the sort button. Sort this one here. Great, you found the sort button. Click on it. And then click sort by warehouse. Is that correct? Excellent. Now select warehouse from the drop down menu. Okay, done. I'll click OK. Ah, so it's organized as you said. Do you know how to? Yes. You know the last, you see this column last order date. How do I get rid of this timestamp? Because you can see all the timestamps are the same. I see. You want to remove the time from the last order date column. To do this, select the entire last order date column, then go to the home tab and in the number section, Click the drop down menu and select short date. This will show only the date and remove the timestamp. Okay, cool, thanks. You're welcome. Is there anything else I can assist you with today? No, so there you go. I mean, it's it's basically an assistant when you get stuck on a software, where you get stuck, where you wanna share information with it, you can be quite complex with it and you can be quite simplified. It'll be there to help you. To me, this shows that we're getting close to those scenes that we've been seeing in science fiction movies where a person's interacting with an interface while talking to an AI with gesturing. We used to look at that and go, wow, that's so far into the future, but actually we're most of us are actually going to see this happen now and use these tools and the warnings that some people are giving about job security and ai you can see that there's validity to those warnings now but i do recommend that you keep watching youtubers you know we can provide an entertainment value that it's something that i assume is easier today to have that connection with a person giving real practical guides i follow a guy called unmesh dinda he's got a channel called uh, pix imperfect he's so good at teaching Photoshop and Photoshop skills. It's amazing. So those kinds of videos and, and those kinds of tutorials and coaches and trainers, I think have a big advantage over AI tools, but very quickly, a lot of those how-to videos, a lot of the tutorials are going to be replaced, unfortunately, for us humans. And if you're a person who's actually providing these kinds of trainings, providing these kinds of services, then you really need to get good at AI and you really need to recalculate for the foreseeable future how you're going to shift the service that you're giving 
the training that you're giving, how will you provide that? And if you're someone who learns a lot online and, and uses these kind of tutorials, get good at AI prompting, get good at instructing the AI using these tools to be more efficient about what you learn. So if you found this video useful, click on the like button and do subscribe to my channel for more AI tips and tricks. Speaking of, if you want to know how to prompt in the best way possible, click on this link here. Also, I'll be doing a video on Google's Notebook LM that shows how it turns seven of my YouTube videos into a 15-minute conversation, a podcast. Stay tuned for that video. Thanks for listening in.